questions for reflection. In our first reading, the Hebrew prophet Jeremiah, a powerfully anointed and courageous man of God, has come under a terrible persecution at the hands of a priest named Pasher because of his prophecies calling Israel to repentance. He has beaten the prophet and placed him in jail. The portion of the 20th chapter we heard on this 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time is a part of his honest but deeply disappointed conversation with the Lord over what has befallen him for proclaiming God's word. He even acknowledges his own fear. It's really important to see this humanity in this account of the prophet. It also teaches us something about our own relationship with the Lord and how we pray. This kind of gut-wrenching honesty is not inappropriate. God knows our hearts, he knows our fears. A little earlier on, Jeremiah says to the Lord, you duped me and I let myself be duped. But he then continues, you are stronger than I and you have prevailed. The Psalmist David in our responsorial Psalm for today's mass reveals the same kind of honesty in his prayer. How honest are we in our prayer? In the second reading, the Apostle Paul reminds the Romans and us that sin no longer reigns because of the redemption of Jesus Christ. In him, the penalty for all the sins of the world has been paid, and the wages of that sin paid. The separation which sin brought, that is death, is now defeated through the free gift of God's grace. Do we believe this? Do we live as though we do? In the Gospel for Holy Mass, Jesus tells us what not to fear, but he also tells us what to fear. Fear is a common human emotion, but most fear is rooted in a lack of trust in God's love. We fear that we will lose our health. We fear that we will not have enough money. We fear that we will fail at a job, a career, or an exam. We fear that we will not be accepted. Then as some grow older and have children, we fear the same things for each one of them. Perhaps we're no longer as crippled by our fears as we were when we were young, but they still lurk in the background, robbing our freedom and preventing our human flourishing. They harm our relationships and can impede our growth. All of our fears find a common root in the fear of death, which can lead to the living slavery spoken of in the letter of the Hebrews. The good news, and that is what the word gospel means in its little translation from Greek, is that this kind of fear is useless. Fear need no longer have any power over us. If we choose to really choose to trust in the Lord and allow his gift, we call it grace, to permeate our daily lives, all useless human fears can be overcome. They can be dispelled in the light of a vibrant and growing faith. But we should fear, in the words of the Lord, the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Hell is real. It's the state of eternal separation from God. And the devil is real, and he hates us and wants our damnation. We must not forget that. The Catholic Catechism explains, and I quote, the teaching of the church affirms the existence of hell and its eternity. Immediately after death, the souls of those who die in a state of mortal sin descend into hell, where they suffer the punishments of hell, eternal fire. The chief punishment of hell is eternal separation from God, in whom alone man can possess the life and happiness for which he was created and for which he longs. And that's paragraph 1035 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church.